to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure. The place for all things guitar and gear. Here are your hosts, Chris, Jesse, and Robert. Welcome to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure, your fortnightly podcast for all things guitar and gear. I'm Chris. With me tonight is Jesse. Hello. And back from episode two. <laughs> <laughs> Might have been Chris. Robert. Robert. Yeah, Robert. All right. <laughs> Yes, All right, it's like a zombie Robert. The canned intro again, and it would actually be appropriate. Yeah, we keep with the canned intro. Now we don't have to explain your absence with some kind of weird story. So yeah, it's it's working out great. So uh, before we get into the meat of the show, let me just remind everybody: if you like what you hear, please click like, click subscribe on YouTube, or leave us a review on iTunes. Hopefully, a positive review, but just don't hurt our feelings. All right. So Jesse, what have you been doing this week, man? <laughs> everything but guitar <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. i'm trying to i'm trying to remember if i picked up a guitar in the last two weeks <laughs> that's terrible life took over you know there's work and there's running and there's i'm getting ready for some races and stuff so i apologize peeps i don't have anything to report on guitar so but, what have you been doing chris <laughs> well before you pass the buck onto me here uh your baby's back oh it is yes it is yeah yeah yes. Is it playable now? It well, <laughs> except for the fact that the guts are out. Of it. <laughs> the guts are still out of it. I have um, worked on the electronics, wiring up the switches, and everything. And it's to the point now where I just have to um, actually solder the pickup wires leads right into the the pots. So, but I just <laughs> I set it aside and haven't really done anything. Most of the time, I just play it without it being plugged in. <laughs> it's the beauty of a hollow, bo- hollow body, right? It still yeah, works. It, it really is nice. Um, and the nut is, I'm happy with the way the nut sits and the, and the you know, the action is good and low for me and uh, yet not buzzy. So I'm, I'm pleased. Cool. cool. Plays nice uh, when I play it. Cool. It's terrible. There'll be a better report in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> there better be. No, I don't think there will be because you're going to be out of town. So, this is uh... how not as true. <laughs> That's right. I'm going on vacation for 10 days. Okay. So the next one's not going to be a, a big practice one either. But then after that. This All is right. what not to do when you're practicing, people. Yes. <laughs> yes. Don't be what like me. Yeah. What, not, what not to do. Not practice. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. So um, what have I been working on? So I've been working on a couple different things. Uh, back to the ear training stuff I talked about last time. Uh, working on trying to figure out basic songs like, again, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, song, um, star Happy Birthday to You. I really hate nursery rhymes, but, you know. <laughs> what i've been doing and, and like i said last time it's still those damn like like marshmallowy sweet videos with like you know somebody singing in soprano and I, it's not soprano i don't know what the, i don't know what it is it's just <laughs> awful, awful so um anyway instead of moving uh across the fretboard i'm moving along strength horizontal trying, mm-hmm. yeah so to get a little better sense of internalizing the intervals right Right. Because, I mean, you can sort of do that kind of if you're going across the fretboard, but you have to remember, OK, when you go down a string, you're going to fourth. Mm-hmm. Right. And so uh, it's that lengthwise was nice. And it's something my uh, former instructor talked to me about my last lesson I had with him um, with doing that. And um, I also downloaded Justin Guitar's app for interval ear training. Oh, sweet. Yeah. So. Everything he does is good, right? Yeah. Justin Guitar. He's pretty I mean, good. He's, he's pretty awesome. And this app that he has for iOS, uh, and it might be for Android too. I don't know. I didn't check. Um, and I think it's just the Justin Guitar ear training app or whatever. It goes along with his five video series that he has. And basically, this, the first video is listening to a fourth and a fifth, perfect fourth and a perfect fifth. Mm-hmm. All right. And then their app has a test. And it's 10 questions, and they play a note and then another note. And you have to then identify, is that a fourth or a fifth between those notes? Okay. Now, the way um, Justin goes about teaching this stuff is he says, okay, uh, you want to map these things to songs. So, old Lang Syne is a fourth. That starts off right. with it, right? And um, the Star Wars theme starts off with a perfect fifth. Oh, that's cool. So I'm, you know, listening to these two notes, I'm going, dun, 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 or whatever it is, right? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, trying to figure out, you know, is that, does that sound right or not? And by God, it works. Mm-hmm. 
even in different keys. You don't have to have the key of the original theme. And no, you can, it's all relative. Yeah. Yeah. So I passed that test flying colors, right? I'm, I'm doing a, a 90 to 100 percent. And you and said to, you were tone deaf. Come on. Well, well, there's two notes. There's like this, like this <laughs> right? It's just two choices. And so, uh, you know, you, you get to um, have to pass 90 percent or higher on that test. And then you go to the next test and the next test, the next level, um, besides the perfect fourth and the fifth, also includes the major second, major third, and um, I, that's it. Major second and major third. Mm-hmm. So for major second, I've been thinking of Frere Jaca. Mm-hmm. So that starts with a major second interval. And then um, uh, well, when the saints come marching in, that starts on a major third. Okay. All right. So again, I'm playing through this next test, right? Going, oh, when the saints come marching, right? Like, nope, that's not it. it must be Star Wars, right? <laughs> And so I've, I've passed that test now too. Okay. Just recently um, I need to run through it a few more times to make sure I'm consistently at 90 to hundred mm-hmm. percent. And, and the number of questions goes up because there's more notes to choose from. Right. 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 So the next level I started sampling and, and I'm kind of awful at it at this point introduces the major six, major seventh and the octave. Mm-hmm. And the problem with those intervals is there's not a whole lot of songs that use those intervals. So I've been using, um, uh, you know, dashing through the snow. I'm pretty sure that's a major six. Okay. Uh, somewhere over the rainbow ends up with an octave, but I think there's a major seven in between somewhere. I think safety dance is an octave. Ah, <laughs> excellent. Safety <laughs> dance. So anyway, I've been trying to, you know, map these songs to intervals and trying to just get the, the guitar. Mm-hmm. Playing the baby, the fundamentals, working those up in, in, in the ear because I just I need to be better with my ear, and my ear is awful right now. Mm-hmm. And actually, it's a slightly less awful. I can distinguish between seconds, thirds, fourths, and fifths. Uh, after that lesson, apparently, um, he introduces the minors. So I think he starts by introducing the flat second, flat third. That'd be any Metallica song there is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so um i think they've copyrighted the minor second actually now that i think they, they <laughs> trademarked it they may very well have and i think the tritone's thrown in there somewhere too but anyway um that's the stuff that i have been working on oh and i should have note i'm really making you look bad this week jesse and i'm sorry <laughs> I don't need you to make me look bad buddy <laughs> <laughs> on all along the watchtower oh sweet Nice. Which, yeah, uh, which the intro is well within my skill set, right? It mm-hmm. doesn't, I don't sound like Hendrix. I am not claiming to sound like Hendrix, okay? But what I'm claiming But at least is, you don't sound like Dylan. <laughs> I mean, right, right. I'm somewhere between Hendrix and Dylan. <laughs> and so, uh, but I'm working on, you know, the intro is pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm just trying to get that tone down now. So I know mm-hmm. what notes to play. Now it's just trying to get the tone down. That last part of the intro, I'm still kind of choppy with. It just sounds a little strange to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I've been working on that with some YouTube videos and just sort of trying to get some new songs in, trying to smooth out over the hills and far away. Mm-hmm. And all the parts. Now I just have to stitch the parts together. And right. some of those transitions are smoother than others. So yeah. So yeah, I've been playing quite a bit of guitar as of late. So well, Rob. I- I threw a, a link into Skype for you guys that you can throw into the show notes. Um, it's at earmaster.com. It's fr- uh, under their free tools. Uh, it's uh, famous songs to lunar intervals. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. Yeah. So it's got them all listed and a whole ton of songs. It's a very nice little thing. You could get YouTube clips or it can just play it for you. Definitely check that out. Yeah, because look at this. It's got, you know, let's see, minor second. They don't have a single Metallica song listed there. <laughs> well, that's just wrong. I know. Well, they didn't say good songs to learn by. Them. <laughs> oh wait, I'm sorry. I was looking at the wrong side. I was looking. Uh, I'm looking at. I was looking at descending. We look at ascending. Yeah, not a single, not a single Metallica song listed there. But you probably know everything that is listed there. I mean, it's got things all- like the Jaws theme, Pink Panther, yeah, Night, you know. Yeah, no, this is great. And they have links to YouTube that you can play them. Yeah. That is, single one. That is nice. Yeah, because I'm only working on ascending um, 
intervals right now and, you know, hopefully get to the descending at some point. But cool. All right. Yeah. Earmaster.com, folks. Uh, we'll put that into show notes and you can go check that out. And hopefully that will help you if you're trying to do some ear training. All right, Robert, have you picked up your guitar? You mean besides to move it? <laughs> <laughs> I moved it from Pennsylvania to New Mexico. Oh, there you go. <laughs> it was one of the few things that didn't get shipped in the truck. Oh. So I put it in the car and took it into the hotel room each night. Um, yeah, so I brought it here. Uh, what I think I'm going to end up doing is, um, so it, it could be something interesting for the show. I really don't have... Uh, any bits of time that come up while I'm home uh, where I can practice, but I do at work. So I got to find a way that uh, I can practice in my office, which mainly means ways to link into my computer. Mm -hmm. um, right. So I'm going to try and see what the various tools are so that I can practice without blowing out <laughs> the inputs on my laptop um, uh, without having to get any kind of fancy gear. Oh, so um, I want to see what kind of free tools are out there. I'm still going to try to uh, use that um, Rocksmith game uh -huh. as a learning tool uh, until I can find somebody around here who can meet my very weird eclectic schedule. <laughs> uh, hopefully find a student on campus. Oh, yeah. I don't think I'll have a problem with that. I would email, up with a professor. <laughs> yeah, email the music department. Yeah. And just say, hey, do you know of any of your students who are teaching you know, during the academic year? Yeah, uh, they'll come and teach me in my office. You might even, yeah, you might even find a music ed student. Yeah. Be willing to come. Uh, I would also I think that's what I'm going to have to do. Yeah, I would also recommend um, just unamplified playing and um, going and working through Justin Guitar's website. Yeah, I was also thinking of picking up one of those. You know how they have just a fretboard with strings. Uh huh. Because uh, I'm still having serious problems with my fingers bleeding. Oh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, Build up those calluses. Got very weak skin. Uh, and it's. It's hard to get the calluses to take, mm -hmm. so I don't know why. So. I have one of those. They're pretty cool. And uh, what you can do is just sit there while you're watching TV or whatever, or whatever you're doing to relax and watch. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah, you could just have it in the living room. And just fret and just, yeah. You don't even have to worry about chord shapes. Although, you know what you could do is pick up like the minor pentatonic scale and just fret those and get those fingers. The problem if you do something like that, though, is you're only working um, really three of your four fingers. So, um, I just want the calluses. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't gotten, I got a little desperate and actually did the super glue thing the other day. Oh. Uh, oh. Just because you can, I, I couldn't do more than like five minutes. Right. Yeah. So, like, I'm not learning anything. It's not enough time to, you know, so I just got to get them to build up. Yeah. Thin I strings. Water thing are... that didn't work. I mean, I tried all the crappy tricks that they show you on the internet. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I just have pathetic skin. But we got to remember, I can actually cut myself with an electric razor. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, which tells you my skin is pretty pathetic. Well, uh, another thing you, should, you can try with the, with the cord thing, um, the little fretboard thing, is uh, major scale. And there's a position of the major scale doesn't require a lot of stretching. Uh, so it's the position where your second finger starts on the low E. And um, you would work all four of your fingers that way. Mm -hmm. And it would be better than just, you know, fret with one finger, fret with another finger. You'd actually learn a scale while yeah, you're practicing something. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Other than just going. Right. Yeah. And then once you get to that, then you can do the other positions of the of the major scale and, and get the stretches and stuff like that. So. So I'll let you know how it goes. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. But other than that, nothing to report, sir. All right. <laughs> That's how I like this show to be run. <laughs> uh, so before we got to today's topic, I thought we would uh, also talk a little bit about this website that I came across on Reddit. And I sent to Jesse. Robert, I don't know if I sent it to you. Um, Stephen from our other show also sent it to me as well. It's called Cordify. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the idea there is that, you know, you play a song on YouTube through this website it identifies what chords are being played. And it gener I think it generates a tab for you too, doesn't it? Mm, I'm not sure if it was just a tab. I tried a couple things, so I'm not sure if Chordify is what I have in my mind or not. It definitely gives you the chord like symbol. Yeah. And it's sort of not really music, it like bars, but it, it like kind of clicks along and, and shows you when the changes are. Yeah, I thought it was uh, an interesting website. It, 
it did not work very well for like uh, ACDC. <laughs> it didn't work really well for the couple things I tried to do with it either. I think what it kind of does, I think the algorithms aren't – I looked at – there's other things too um, and I can't remember the names of the stuff. There's an Apple-specific one. There's a Riff Master software as well that some people – actually prefer to the Quartify, but, but although it's not a website, you have to buy software. Um, but they're all kind of similar in that the algorithms are like, eh. <laughs> I think what they do is they, they sort of sense whatever the, the lowest note is, the bass note, whether it's in the bass guitar or the regular guitar, and then they sort of figure major or minor chord above that, and that's as far as they go. Yeah. And so I think if it's a, it's a simple structure like a folk song or something, it probably works better. Um, but rock where you've got like different instruments and stuff like that. And, and especially if you have any kind of extended chords or anything, it's going to be weird. Yeah, or any distortion it's, could be. It's oh, yeah. one and oh my God, it's not even close. Yeah. <laughs> so what it could be is, I mean, if you're, um, I mean, of course, I, I think as great ear training is, hey, you try to figure this stuff out by ear anyway. I mean, there's only mm-hmm. certain, once you know what the key is, there's only certain choices you're going to make anyway. Right. But um as a sort of hint, if you're really just starting out, I think it's it's fine to say, okay, how is this wrong? <laughs> right. Yeah. Go from there, you know? Yeah, absolutely. All right, yeah, I just wanted to mention that and bring that up in the show. There's something to work off of. Yeah, yes. sure. Yeah. yeah. You know, at least get you started for if you want to try to noodle your way through a song you've never tried. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, and, and I think, you know, Jesse brought up a good point too, is if it says that that first chord is an E and you play an E major chord, and it doesn't sound like the song, that's still good ear training. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're identifying, oh, that's a way off, you know, or whatever. Um, So, all right, cool. Um, One of the things I thought we'd talk about today, uh, (laughs) as we were talking about before the show started, is um, guitar teachers. Because I've recently had to find a new one. Uh, My former teacher has left town, and uh, so I had to... just scare him away? (laughs) Uh, I hope not. No, no, no. He's he's moving on to... uh, greener pastures and, and so on and wish them all the best of luck um but uh, relocation. <laughs> <laughs> but what i thought we would talk about is sort of what do you look for in a good guitar teacher and i thought that'd be a good show because sometimes i think some of our listeners are probably just getting started or maybe they're thinking about teaching guitar or maybe they're thinking about you know finding an instructor to work with for a short period of time whatever the case might be sure. so yeah what do you look for well, a good thing would be what, what are you after? <laughs> I yeah. mean, because you know, different uh, teachers are going to um, have sort of different ways of teaching and, and you know, offer different things. So it kind of depends, like like you say, on, on where you're starting. I mean, if you're a beginner, then it's really about communication, and um, you kind of have to have I don't want to say blind trust, but you know, be pointed to somebody from somebody you know, that you can trust or whatever, or maybe you don't have a lot of choices. I know when I was coming, there wasn't a lot of choices at, at the time at least that I knew about, you know? Right. So you just go from there with the knowledge that, Hey, if, if we don't get along or if I don't feel like I'm going to learn much or whatever the deal is after a few lessons, Hey, feel free to, it's a buyer's market, you know, go ahead and move on. But if you have a good rapport, that's somebody to stick with, you know, that you can learn from. If you have something specific to learn, you know, it's like, okay, I want to learn, you know, bebop jazz or something <laughs> like, you know, so um, then, you know, it's more specific. You got to sort of dig a little deeper and find somebody who can actually teach that specifically. Yeah. And I think I asked this once, what would it be? 80 episodes ago. Um, had either of you ever tried any of the online instruction? Not, not canned stuff, the live stuff. No, yeah. no, I haven't. Uh, I've heard people on Reddit say that they had some good success with it I, on our guitar. Um, so, but yeah, I've never tried it. I know that a friend of mine, harmonica player has done that and he enjoyed doing it and got a lot out of it as well. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think it's worthwhile. See, I think it's pretty straightforward to set up Skype or Google hangout. Right. And, um, you know, work with somebody and see how well that, uh, turns out. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I haven't heard anybody though that I know personally do a voice guitar. I think that's a really good option if you're. I mean, mm-hmm. it really depends on the individual uh, circumstances. Yeah. I mean, if you happen to be in the middle of the cornfields somewhere, <laughs> and it's really, um, or if you're younger and don't have the um, wherewithal to get you know to drive to a lesson, 
right. um, then that could be a problem, you know, so uh, that might be a really good option. And technology can get in the way just a little bit, you know, if you have glitches or, or whatever. But I think the just built in video conferencing like we're doing or Skype or Hangouts, or, I mean, is good enough that uh, it's really more about the rapport and, and you know, the teacher student relationship. So that if you find somebody, uh, the technology really shouldn't get in the way that much. Yeah, if you want to like do nothing but Norwegian death metal and there's no <laughs> Norwegian death metal teacher around, then yeah, you could be Dragon like, Force. Right, <laughs> right. right. You're all Dragon Force all the time. <laughs> That's right. All I want to do is drag. Yeah, uh, I think with when you're, um, with a guitar instructor, obviously the knowledge of the content, right? is mm-hmm. important. So they have to know how to play guitar, obviously. They have to know how to, you know, all the, they should know something about the theory and these kinds of things. They should just know the basics. But on top of that, I think there's uh, other issues too that need to be, uh, I think, there. And one of them is, is just sort of passion for what they do. Absolutely. You know, I think the best people at teaching whatever it might be, um, guitar or otherwise, are people who would be um, doing that even if they weren't getting paid. Oh, Yeah. You know, they absolutely love their craft and it's uh, and they want to share that with somebody and that's somebody you can get inspired from. Right? A good I think a good t- a guitar teacher will inspire you to, to take that extra step past what it is that, you know, you already know how to do, right. um, but take it to that next level. Uh, and somebody you can learn from and it can, you know, knows more than what they're teaching. Yeah. You know, that's from, well, this becomes like an existential question now about, yeah. you know, pedagogy like in, in general <laughs> instead of just guitar. But I mean, right. and th- those are the sort of the aspects. I mean, one is they have to know their, their own craft. They have to know the subject matter like anybody, any coach or professor or whatever. They have to have the knowledge to be able to impart that knowledge. But then they also have to, as you say, communicate that excitement for the thing. And, you know, we, we've all had teachers that just exuded that sort of passion, excitement, whatever you want to say, coaches who've done the same thing. You know, and sometimes it's like, you know, you had a lesson or a class or a workout or whatever it was. And it's kind of like, OK, I did it. I checked off that hour or whatever it was. And I did learn more than if I'd have just been sitting on my couch. Um, but then you've had other experiences with where it was above and beyond. You know, it's 10 times better because – of the excitement you came home and it's like okay it's not that i'm done it's that now i want to practice another three hours you know right and uh yeah if, if you can find somebody who inspires that sort of thing even beyond your own sort of internal motivation definitely that's a keeper you know for as long as you can and as long as they can still help you yeah absolutely absolutely um and these are traits that I have uh, definitely found in instructors in the past. And mm-hmm. I look for, you know, in future instructors of people who just, yeah, inspirational, push you forward, know what they're talking about. And just, I like the kind of uh, guitar instructor who comes like completely out of left field too. So you're, you're talking about something and you're like, Oh, you know, in Norwegian death metal, you do that too. Yes. <laughs> or whatever. And you're talking about blues or, or whatever it is. Right. You're talking about. That's just a cool thing. Cause it shows sort of an understanding of how it's all, guitar right 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 it's all guitar and he knows the deep history that blues actually originally came from a norwegian death metal so yes right (laughs) (laughs) the truest of all blues that comes from norway um i see this long topic coming up (laughs) (laughs) secret history of guitar right it's played by uh norwegian death metal dragon force was the original of the blues yeah um no it's actually the see-through people from finland Oh, <laughs> well, they're so pale you can see through. <laughs> Sorry, ghost metal. <laughs> you might allowed to finish. No offense, all our listeners. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, um, and I thought we would uh, also talk a little bit of today about what we talked about last time because we actually got a comment. Oh, I no. missed the. Oh no, I didn't. Is that, yeah, because uh, you replied to it. Yeah. Yes, I did. See so that. Our existential discussion of what is a guitar <laughs> uh, <laughs> that we ended the show with last time uh, actually drew a comment from um, Darren Johnson, who basically had pointed out uh, a couple of good things. Uh, one, we talked about you know what is a guitar, and he talks a little bit about um, traditional instruments like the violin has pretty much been settled for a long time, right? You know, and so the question is: is the acoustic guitar? that kind of uh, uh, way. And then he also talked about what was fueling the in- uh, industry. I, th- I don't 
remember if we touched on this or not, but uh, many of his students will play a Strat, for example, because Hendrix played one. Right. Right. The celebrity factor. Right. And he concludes by saying that he thinks if a rock star uh, came out and endorsed a carbon fiber guitar, we might see more of them in living rooms. That's true. You know, speaking of carbon fiber, it's like, actually, there are carbon fiber violins as well. Yes. <laughs> Um, yes. Yeah, and, and basses and whatnot, and they certainly have their own uh, advantages, I guess. But, you know, he's right. I mean, in in my own history, my first, like, good guitar that I saved up for was partially inspired by the by the um, celebrity factor. It, it was a Kramer, and everybody was buying Kramers because Eddie Van Halen played, well, he didn't really play a Kramer, but he was endorsing them, you know. Oh, see, I thought you were going to say Satchel. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Satchel. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so, I mean, back in the day, I was, in fact, it's funny because I, I went to a music store in order to get um, actually a copy because I couldn't afford the real thing of an Ibanez Destroyer because the uh, one guitar player, Phil Collin from Def Leppard, played a Destroyer with a whammy bar. But actually, to get something like that was insane price, you know, to a high school kid. Um, so I was looking at like a knockoff that was still explorer shaped, you know, sort of the basic thing. Wasn't the quality level I was wanted. And kindly, the well, not kindly because it was a better guitar anyway. But the uh, music store guy um, pointed me to a Kramer. And all I had to do is play a Floyd Rose. It's like, OK, this is what I want. Because I had a Fender Mustang and that vibrato went out of tune you couldn't do anything right. on that. <laughs> and then so, you spent the next six months trying to figure out how to string your guitar. Exactly so. And, <laughs> and that was a weird thing. I've never seen a vibrato like that again. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, yeah. So, but uh, one of his selling points was, hey, you know, Van Halen plays this kind of thing. And I think, I don't know if I'm rewriting my, my you know, ram or not, but I think that was kind of a icing. It's like, oh, yeah, then it's good, you know. And so um, I'm sure that affects, you know, everybody. So then the question is, yeah, why don't my thinking is, OK, but but if I'm a millionaire or whatever, have my own a lot of money or something and I can play anything I want at that point, why would I necessarily play Strat, Les Paul, Telecaster, something established like that when I could have anything, including a custom made whatever, which some people do, though you get like a Mark Knopfler who can get a custom made guitar and it ends up being a strat. <laughs> it's, right. it's a custom right. strat, you know. Right. But then, um, yeah, but the thing is, if you came up learning on that instrument anyway, I guess that is what you'd want. Yeah. You know, unless you're like, well, yes, but all this time I've been thinking this would be good if only they did this, this, and this, and this. And so now I'll, I'll build that. Yeah, I, I guess my journey has largely been a completionist mindset. Mm-hmm. So, like, I had the, the Yamaha, the um, Pacifica, right, the 012, and uh, it had the humbuckers, uh, HSS um, setup. Mm-hmm. And I was like, all right, that's a strat like body. The next guitar should be a Les Paul because that's the other kind, right? <laughs> the <laughs> that's other right. kind. <laughs> that's, 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 <laughs> the mindset, right? that's the other kind. And then I got the Les Paul, and I was like, all right, then uh, what's the other? What's, what else is there? Oh, there's hollow body, so let's get a semi hollow, mm-hmm. right? And then I ended up upgrading the Strat to get the SSS configuration. And then I was like, oh, well, you know, don't have a telly. Let's get a telly, you know? And then don't have an SG. It's kind of like a Les Paul. All right, we'll do the SG. And the last guitar was has P90s in it because, well, I didn't have a guitar with P90s. Mm-hmm. Right? So it's sort of been like, all right, what things don't I have? But, if, but then again, the set that I'm comparing myself to is pretty limited, right? That's Strats, true. Les Pauls, the semi-hollows that are like the 339, the, the Les Paul semi-hollow, mm-hmm. you know. You still don't have the double-locking Floyd Rose-equipped Norwegian death metal guitar. That is true. I don't, <laughs> I don't have a double net SG. And how can you possibly, that's true, but how can you possibly play blues without the Norwegian death metal guitar? Well, that's true. I mean, I, <laughs> all you could have started out with, well, I have a flying V. All I need now is an Explorer and I'm done. <laughs> Oh, I didn't think about the Flying V. <laughs> of course, the problem with the Explorer and the Flying V, a little less so with the Explorer, is I usually sit when I play. Oh, right. And so the, the Flying V especially, I, I could see that being a challenge right. to play while seated. The Explorer, I think, as well, but not to the same degree. It balances well, but it's a boat anchor. <laughs> I, if, uh, 
played a couple of deans at the various stores that have these just bizarre metal bodies, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, not metal, not made out of metal, but it's the metal, the pointy metal shaped thing. <laughs> Guitars that, you can hurt yourself with. <laughs> right, right, right. You can poke your eye out with the thing, right? And it's like, this is not a CD playing guitar. You have to be standing to play this thing. Um, so that's one nice thing I like about the traditional body styles. You can sit and play with them both. So. Yeah. I think they, the, a few of the newer sort of variants – um, Marty Friedman had one. There's a Jackson makes a Kelly model, which is sort of like, well, let's take an Explorer and make it easy to sit with, but also more organic and sweepy looking, but you can still hurt yourself with it. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. It's, like, it's like the Zen approach to pointy guitars. And I've always thought, yeah, I should have a guitar like that, but I'm like, I would never play it. <laughs> yeah, it's just pointy is not me. You yeah. know, it's. I, as, I was, weird. With as metalhead as I've been, it's not me either. I, I just. Just can't, just can't pull it off. I feel weird when I play one too. Like I'm at the store, I'm like, I'm such a poser. You know, I <laughs> you just got to do the Pete Township, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they'd like it though if I started swinging it around my back and stuff like that. And then well, you're not going to cross the floor. Not if it went flying into the wall of guitars. Definitely not. <laughs> that would be my luck too. And it would fall into the wall of like the Les Paul standards. <laughs> Take out, you know, like. $15,000 worth of guitars with one $300 guitar. <laughs> Historic series. <laughs> that would work. Uh, I could just imagine coming to my, home, to my wife and explaining that one away. I was like, well, I guess what we own. $15,000 worth of broken guitars. <laughs> Our store? Yeah, we own it. Yeah, we own it now. <laughs> all right. Well, I think this show has uh, pretty much covered all the bases. We did a lot of stuff today. Yes. Yeah. Including so, Norwegian death metal. So yeah, I mean, you know, we've gone from what is a guitar to talking about death metal, we've talked about guitar instruction, ear training. I don't think there's an aspect of guitardom that we didn't cover. <laughs> How do they taste? <laughs> it's, uh, do not put your guitar in your mouth. <laughs> They're not for eating. They are for okay. eating. Yes. Well, I don't know. You picked my guitar, so maybe it was for eating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I licked it and I was like, oh, taste good. Like Robert. <laughs> All right. So, uh, folks, uh, if you liked what you heard, uh, please click like, click subscribe, tweet us at SST Show, leave us some comments. We'd love to hear from you. We'd like to get some show ideas. What would you like us to talk about? Please, please let us know. We're happy to take requests as long as they're related to guitar in some way or another. Um, let's see. You can tweet me directly if you want at CW Culp. You can tweet Jess, Jesse at Jess for 700, right? Yep. And Robert at RS Macy, I believe. Yep. All right. And so until next time, folks, just keep picking and grinning. Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure is a production of Jester Cat Studios. You can see more about this and all other Jester Cat shows at JesterCat.com. You can also email the show at SST at JesterCat.com or continue the conversation on Twitter at SST Show. You can follow Robert at RS Macy, Jesse at Jester700, and Chris at CW Culp. Thanks to Jesse for playing and recording our intro music.